Okay, students, we are starting chapter two of your sexual anatomy book. And as you can see here, we are covering the cranium and the facial bones. Uh, this is a really interesting image in the fact that this is a 3D CT. It's um, volume rendered into a 3D. And this is a gunshot. And we do see this. It does come through. Um, I've seen it three, four times in my career. And what happens is they'll take a gun or a shotgun and they put it right under their chin and pull the trigger. And what happens when they do that is they blow their face off and miss their brain. So um, they come in trying to get airway, uh, usually have to trach the patient. Um, it's a mess. So just so you know, um, they'll come to CT and we'll uh, perform the scan and you're usually wrapped completely in bandage by the time that we get them, which is good. And um, when we do the volume rendering, we can see the damage done. So they think they had problems before that they wanted to blow their head off and missed and blew their face off. So it's a mess, just so you know, be warned. All right, so there are eight cranial bones. There's a frontal bone, two parietal bones, two temporal bones, two sphenoids, an occipital. Um, at the top, there's the bregma um, with your coronal suture. You have your lambdoidal suture here in the back, um, external occipital uh, protuberance or your ineon, mastoid process, your EAM, styloid process, uh, gabella here. Those are the big ones that uh, you should know on the slide. Moving through, this is your CT3D. Um, you can see the fillings here on the patient. So when I go through these images, I usually go clockwise. So I'll start with the parietal bone is here. Uh, hard to see uh, suture coming across the top. Here's your coronal suture so you can landmark yourself. Here's your frontal bone, your sphenoid bone. Ethmoid is on the inside. I'd never ask you to label that. You can't tell exactly where that's at. You have a temporal bone here. This is your ineon or your external occipital protuberance on your occipital bone with your um, lambdoidal uh, suture. The very top, the highest point of your head is called the vertex. So looking at the skull um, straight on, you have the frontal bone, uh, superorbital uh, foramen. There's a hole right there, a nerve comes out of there. Um, optic foramen and your sphenoid bone here. Coming across is your temporal bone, superior orbital fissure, uh, sphenoid is right there, gabella across the top, and your parietal bones. That's the widest part is where your parietal bones are. Here is a CT3D. So coming across, here's your frontal bone, parietal eminence. That's the widest part on your parietal bone. And superorbital fissure. It's right in there, temporal bone, sphenoid bone, hard to label on a uh, 3D CT. I wouldn't have you label the orbits on a 3D CT. On MRI, you'd be able to label them. Uh, ethmoid bone in there. This is a great picture. It's, it's a sagittal um, cut down the middle so that you can see the inside of the skull all these little grooves and you'll see them in um, our models in the classroom and you can see them on MRI. They're meningeal grooves so there's vessels within those. Vertex is the top, here's your parietal bone, cella tersica, lambdoidal suture and you have your squamosal suture here, occipital bone, temporal bone. It's highlighted for you so it's easier to see. On the inside is your internal acoustic meatus. On the outside is your external acoustic meatus. Hypoglossal canal, right there. It's in your occipital bone. Your styloid process, sphenoidal sinus, palatine bone, right there. Uh, mandible, of course. Your vulmar, maxillary bone, ethmoid, nasal bone. Coming across, here's your sphenoid. It's a section of it here. Crystagallis, the part that sticks up. Frontal sinus and your frontal bone with your coronal suture coming down the side. All right, here's an axial cut. I'm gonna cover here, here's your anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa, and posterior cranial fossa. When we're coming around clockwise, 
here is your orbital plates of your frontal bone. So here's your frontal bone, this whole piece right here, and this is your orbital plate of your frontal bone. Now remember on a lateral skull, we look at that to make sure that um, the plates are lined up to see if there's any uh, tilt. So Cristagalli with your cribriform plate just below that. Cella tersica, foramen rotundum. Now your foramen rotundum is typically tucked up under the uh, lesser wing of your sphenoid. So it's hard to see on an axial image. Your foramen rotundum, um, I'm sorry, your foramen oval and your foramen spinosium. Now, the oval actually is oval in shape, so it's easy uh, to identify. And your spinosum, the way I remember the spinosum is like a little piece of spit. So you have your rotundum that's tucked up under the lesser wing, then you have your oval, which is actually shaped like an oval, and your spinosum, which is a little teeny opening. You have um, your foramen lucerum right here. And then we come down to your internal acoustic canal with your mastoid foramen. There's an opening right there. Hypoglossal canal is on either side of your foramen magnum. Here's your foramen magnum. Your internal occipital protuberance, remember the external occipital protuberance, which we also call the ineon. And this whole piece right here with the clivus up here, this is all your occipital bone. Your jugular foramen, it's bilateral, so you have your hypoglossal uh, canal, and just uh, lateral to that is your jugular foramen. Your temporal bone is here, and your sphenoid bone. So this is your greater wing down here, and your lesser wing is up top. So greater wing down lower, and lesser wing up top. So, sutures, you have your, we'll start with your parietal eminence, which is the widest part, your vertex, which is the highest part, superior sagittal sinus up top, your lambdoidal suture, your occipital bone, temporal bone, and your frontal bone. This is a coronal slice um, with CT. So, here we have your uh, squamous portion of your frontal bone. And I don't care if you call it the squamous portion, just if you label it the frontal bone, I'm fine with that. And if you want to be fancy, you can label it the squamous portion of the frontal bone. This is your frontal sinus. And um, you can actually see right in there is your uh, supraorbital foramen. So here's an axial slice of CT. You can see your frontal sinus. This is your orbital plate here and coming down and around. This is your temporal bone, occipital bone. This would be your internal occipital protuberance, that piece that sticks up right there. This right here is your anterior clenoid sticking out right there. So this is your dorsum cella. Your ethmoid bone. So when looking at the ethmoid bone, we have the perpendicular plate with the cribriform plate. Here's your anterior ethmoid air cells and olfactory foramina, posterior ethmoid air cells. When we're looking at it at CT, so you can see the cribriform plate, ethmoid bulla, we talked about the bulla, and they're the round bulbs. Um, so cribriform plate, which has the air sinuses, you have your perpendicular plate, you can see your anterior uh, process anterior clenoid processes here on either side. This is your dorsum cella in the back that's on your sphenoid bone. Here's the anterior view of your ethmoid. So you can see your Cristagalli sticking up here. Superior nasal uh, concha here. Lateral uh, labernith or lateral mass. I call it the labernith typically. Ethmoid bulla, infundulum. Here, eucinate process, perpendicular plate, middle nasa concha, and your ethmoid air cells. So here is the coronal slice in CT. You have your Cristagalli sticking up there. You have your cribriform plate just below that, your infundulum, your eucinate, and your middle uh, meatus. Your middle nasal concha 
and superior nasal concha. Ethmoid bulla, it's round, and your um, cribriform plate, orbital plates, I'm sorry, orbital plates across the top. All right, the sphenoid bone. So this bone is lots of fun. You have your lesser wing up on top. You have your orbital groove here, greater wing. Your optic canal is tucked up under the lesser wing. You have your foramen oval and your foramen spinosum out the little small piece. The oval is actually shaped like oval. Your carotid sulcus. Now this is important that you remember that because I'm going to show it to you on different views. Dorsum cella, your cella tercica. Posterior clenoid processes are the parts that stick up. Um, I want you to know your frame and rotundum, which is up under the lesser wing and your anterior clenoid processes. Here's a little sagittal view, uh, CT. We have, I want you to know your cella tursca, your dorsum cella, clivus, occipital bone, posterior arch of C1. Now, a lot of you guys will miss that on the exam. So you have your occipital bone, then there's a space. There's a posterior arch of C1. Here is your clivus coming up, your dorsum cella. This is your sphenoid sinuses, and this is your ethmoid sinuses. So lateral view of the sphenoid, um, this gets confusing. This is your cella tursca, your posterior uh, clenoid processes with your dorsum cella just below it. Uh, here is your foramen rotundum. Down, coming low, we have your pterygoid hamilus, your lateral uh, pterygoid lamina, your medial lamina, greater wing here, and your uh, superior orbital fissure coming down right there. Okay, so here is a chronal slice of your sphenoid bone. Posterior clenoid processes, your dorsum cella, just below that is your uh, clivus. So here's your mandibular condyle, this is your temporal bone, mandible, parietal bone up top. Okay, coming through, zygoma, the Z stands for the zygoma, superior orbital fissure, cella tersica, and your greater wing is here. Your dorsum cella with your posterior clenoid on the very top um, superior portion of your dorsum cella. The lesser wing of your sphenoid, your optic canal coming through here. So the optic nerve comes through the optic canal. Your sphenoid sinuses posterior here and your ethmoid sinuses are the anterior portion. So this is oblique. So we've angled, as you can see here, we've angled it to match the floor of the skull. So when we're looking here, you can actually see it laid out all in one plane, which is really nice. So this is how we scan in CT, one to reduce the dose to the orbit. So you have your ethmoid sinuses. This is your greater wing of your sphenoid. This is your foramen oval. Um, coming around your jugular fossa, the way that it's cut, it's kind of funny. Your carotid canal is right above that. And this is your... Uh, Let's see, what are they calling that? Your sphenoid sinus. I don't know if I agree with that. I would say that, is that really what they're calling it? I'm sorry. Oh, yes, your spinosum. So you have your oval and your spinosum. I agree with that 100%. All right. So to review the sphenoid bone up top, you have your superior orbital fissure. Your foramen rotundum is tucked up under. And coming down, you have your lateral pterygoid, your medial pterygoid with the hamilus hanging off the bottom, and your pterygoid canal, greater wing, lesser wing, and the body. All right. So looking here, anterior clenoid. So you can see where we're slicing. You got to look and see where we're slicing to know where you're at. So you have your anterior clenoid process of your sphenoid bone, sphenoid sinus. You have your foramen rotundum, a piece of it you can see. Um, what else do I want you to know? Coming around, you can see your medial, medial and lateral uh, pterygoid plates, ramus of your mandible. That's your zygomatic arch free floating out there. This is your greater wing. All right, so that should sum up.